Good morning, Fantasy. It is Monday, February 28th. March is just around the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great show for you all today. Uh, getting into some news and notes from around the league, followed by a listener mailbag and more. It's going to be a great episode, guys. Thank you so much for checking out the, uh, the show today. Make sure you guys subscribe to the podcast, wherever you're listening to or watching. If you're on YouTube, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. You know, the little bell is always staring at you. Click that thing. See what it does. Uh, it gives you notifications. Just enhance. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to the show, everybody. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. Uh, sipping on this Mountain Dew, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we're going to have a good show. We have some really fun questions here from Twitter today. Shout out to everybody who has questions on Twitter. Much love to you all. It's going to be a good time. Not a ton of news happening right now in the NFL, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to have we're going to cover some a little few interesting tidbits here while we get started. Uh, first up, the only really notable fantasy football news happening right now, I'd say, is Ian Thomas and the Carolina Panthers have come to a new contract extension. Uh, three years, $16.5 million with $8 million guaranteed. I think this is honestly pretty significant. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter talking about that. They don't really think that Ian Thomas is much of a threat to Tommy Tremble. I personally just think that Ian Thomas is a pretty good NFL tight end. I think he's pretty capable. He does everything you really need out of an NFL tight end. You know, he's capable of run blocking. He's capable as a pass catcher. Uh, he's by no means a superstar, but I think he gets a lot of things done that a lot of NFL teams really want these days from their tight ends. And I think that he's a pretty underrated guy in that situation, if that makes sense. Uh, Tommy Tremble is a good tight end. He was a decent prospect coming out of the NFL draft last year. But by no means, I think he's a world wrecker. Uh, I think that him and Tremble and Thomas will probably split a lot of time. But uh, the, with the contract that Thomas got, I think he's going to easily see most of the workload here. Uh, he got $8 million guaranteed as a tight end. I mean, that's a pretty decent amount of money to throw at somebody. Like I mentioned, obviously not a superstar tight end by any means. Uh, but three three years, sixteen point five million is nothing to sneeze at at all. Uh, I remember uh, Eric Ebron signed a two year, six million dollar contract. Uh, sorry, twelve million dollar contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers recently. So I mean, that's a little bit more than Tommy uh, not Tommy Trumbull, Ian Thomas on a year by year basis. So just kind of compare that to the uh, to the Eric Ebron contract there before they drafted Friar Um He's in for a decent workload. I don't think he's going to be a star by any means. Ian Thomas saying uh, saying that there, but uh, Tommy Trumbull is not my favorite i honestly think he's kind of irrelevant moving forward in dynasty leagues that being said though i mean dynasty leagues are so deep with benches uh so i think he's on the waiver wire he's still definitely worth a stash i wouldn't be going on buying him necessarily for anything uh but i definitely think he's worth holding on to if uh, you have him on your bench already or if you can get him on your waiver wire for cheap if you have enough room uh tommy tremble is definitely a decent stash ian thomas is also a pretty good stash as well i think he could be a startable fantasy tight end over the next season if he gets a good upgraded quarterback so keep an eye out for Tommy Tremble and keep an eye out for Ian Thomas. Tremble, however, only had 20 catches for 180 uh, yards and one touchdown last season. So like I mentioned, he's a stash. He could develop. I mean, young tight ends usually take two to three years to develop anyway, as we kind of seen from trends in the past. But uh, keep him around. I, I wouldn't say cut him, but keep him around. Keep him around. He definitely has a future. But I don't think he's going to really take over the starting job. But if he does take over the job, he could be decent. So hold on to Thomas. Uh, hold on to Tremble and see which one kind of takes over the job there, I guess, in Carolina. I would lean towards Thomas, but you never know. Moving forward here, uh, the NFL Combine is around the, right around the corner. As I just mentioned, there's not a ton of news going on right now in the NFL, but the Combine definitely will provide us with more headlines moving forward here. Uh, the NFL Combine starts uh, March 3rd and runs through March 6th in Indianapolis. Buzz will start being built around prospects. Don't fall for the hype completely on some of these guys who are running really fast in shorts and cleats. Um, no pads, obviously, no actual skills are being displayed except for just how fast you can run, how fast you can lift. Uh, the only pay attention drill I would look at is for quarterbacks, obviously, some accuracy drills. And for running backs, I think it's really important to see how they do on that uh, that turn and catch drill, seeing if they're a natural pass catcher or not. Jason Moore from the Fantasy Footballers talks about that a lot. If they have that hitch in their, in their catching, if they really think about catching the ball, or if it's kind of like a natural fluidity that comes as a receiving back. It's pretty important for fantasy football running backs. To make note if, uh, you know, their fluidity in catching the ball. Uh, we want a guy who does not have brick hands. Fantasy football, obviously everyone knows that receptions are king, especially in uh, full point PPR uh, fantasy football leagues. Uh, last piece of news here before we jump into these listener questions here, which I'm really excited to get into. Uh, there's no news yet on the Aaron Rodgers front as far as his decision about the 2022 season. Whether that means he's taking his talents to Green Bay next season again, the couch as in retirement, or some other NFL franchise. Uh, the world is still awaiting his next move. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers is one of, if not the most talented quarterbacks in the NFL. Even though his old age, he is still absolutely elite as he just took home his fourth NFL MVP this past uh, few weeks here at NFL Honors. 
Aaron Rodgers is an absolute stud. Wherever he goes, I think he will automatically transform that team into a playoff contender. I personally would love to see him go to the Denver Broncos. It's a heavily rumored destination, obviously. Uh, same with the Tennessee Titans. He just had a – I think he built a bunch of uh, – bought a bunch of land to build a new house in Tennessee. So a lot of people are thinking that he could go to the Titans. And he's you – know, I think he's reportedly interested in going there as well. That would be a fun team. i him and A.J. Brown, uh, the Jones company, or Derek Henry. Uh, and obviously the Broncos have literally everything except their quarterback. He's in the line, Javante Williams and company in the backfield. Wide receiver, got Jerry Judy, K.J. Hamler, uh, Cortland Sutton. Tim Patrick, tight end, you got Noah Fan, Alberto, and a really good defense. I think the Denver Broncos make a lot of sense for Aaron Rodgers moving forward, but obviously we don't really know where his decision is going to come. It could be any time, honestly. I'm not too sure what to say, uh, which way I lean on that decision for him, but I do think wherever he goes, he obviously automatically changes the landscape of the NFL in its entirety. So wherever he goes is uh, going to be a huge piece of news over the next few weeks here. Uh, I assume the decision will probably be made before the NFL draft happens. So. Uh, I expect a decision here within the next couple weeks on Aaron Rodgers. But that's going to do it for today's news and notes, everybody. With that being said, guys, we're going to hop into some listener questions here, which I'm super excited to get into. We have a ton, we have a ton, to, get, uh, ton to get to today, and there's one in particular that I'm really excited to answer. All right, guys, let's head over into the listener questions. All these questions are coming from Twitter, so thank you, everybody, who uh, sent these over to me on Twitter. First and foremost... Uh, why so low on Kyle Pitts and Dynasty, at least compared to consensus? That's a great question. I believe I have Kyle Pitts as my Dynasty tight end four right now, behind George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, and Mark Andrews. I have Darren Waller as well behind him at tight end five. I like Kyle Pitts a lot. I really do. He showed a lot of nice potential in his rookie season. Uh, I think he's the second tight end rookie ever to have passed 1,000 receiving yards. Uh, just didn't have a lot of touchdowns. I think Kyle Pitts is going to be great. I really do. I think he's going to be a consistent year in, year out, top three, top five fantasy football tight end, which is an awesome, really awesome man to have. He's super young. He was like 21 years old. Lead product coming out. Everyone marked him as a Hall of Famer. Future Hall of Famer as soon as he kind of stepped out into the draft class. So why is he so low in my rankings? I'm going to answer that question in just a second here. For me, I think the, the thing with Kyle Pitts is quarterback long-term in Atlanta. I don't like giving the whole quarterback maker break a tight end kind of situation or a wide receiver weapon at all. Um, but with Kyle Pitts, I think the quarterback play is really important for him. Matt Ryan right now is still about 35 years old, I believe. So he still has a few years left in the tank, but I think it makes a lot of sense for the Atlanta Falcons here as they're kind of going through this re- rebuild process that's been going on for years now, ever since they made that Super Bowl and lost to Tom Brady in the 20-3 Super Bowl. Sorry, Kosh, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> he's a big Falcons fan. I just have to troll him with that, though. Um, I think quarterback play is important for him. And I think going forward, they're going to add more weapons. Yeah, keep in mind, we didn't see a lot of Calvin Ridley this year uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. So Kyle Pitts is pretty hyper-targeted. Uh, and then also, I think if a quarterback change happens, it could hurt Kyle Pitts moving forward, especially to enter something like a bridge gap kind of quarterback phase where they bring in a Teddy Bridgewater type, uh, type guy. I do think he's going to be elite, but I like to play dynasty fantasy football in a three-year window. So what that means is I'm looking, to, I'm looking at these players' values for the next three seasons. So next season, season after that, and season after that one. Uh, so Kyle Pitts is going to be great for those. That's why I have him at a tight end four. But I still think that the guys like Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, and Mark Andrews will be more dominant in those first two years before the third year. Three years from now, Kyle Pitts might surpass, surpass them. But I look at a three-year window. So year one, year two, and year three. So I think with Kyle Pitts, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, George Kittle, and all those guys, Darren Waller as well, I think they're all kind of in the same range for me as that top five tier. Uh, I think the tier really drops after that. TJ Hawkinson's kind of a tier two uh, on his own right now, in my opinion. Uh, but those tier one guys, it's clearly uh, George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, Kyle Pitts, and Darren Waller for me for these next three years. And uh, I think all those guys are pretty interchangeable in rankings, in my opinion. But I personally just like to side with the guys who have been so dominant for so long. I and mean, I really think Kyle Pitts had an incredible rookie season, and he's going to have many more incredible seasons. But right now, I have Kyle Pitts at tight end four. Uh, nothing wrong with him having a tight end one, two, three, four, five, anywhere in that range, really. Uh, but personally, he is tight end four for me. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, next up here, we're going to move on to the one I've been really looking forward to answering. Uh, can you compare the outlook of first-year wide receivers to condiments? Like, for example, Jamar Chase's catch-up because he's clearly the number one option. First of all, I just want to say, Everyone who answer, asks questions in the fantasy community for podcasters, I think this is the best question you possibly could ever ask somebody because it's, it's fantastic, especially for me. I'm a big food guy. Love sharing my food takes on Twitter. Love sharing my pictures of my nachos on Twitter. If you haven't seen those yet, 
go look at my nachos. My nachos are godly. And if you don't think so, you're wrong. But anyway, <laughs> I have a little bit of a list here. Uh, mostly going down the draft board in order, but kind of all over the place. Uh, first up, I think Jamar Chase is hot sauce because he can burn you downfield, and he's a, like such an electric player, and he's a staple of the offense. You know what I'm saying? Like hot sauce is such an underrated condiment. Hot sauce runs the world. I mean, imagine Mexican food without hot sauce. Imagine chicken wings without hot sauce, a buffalo sauce, if you will. Um, the world would be so much worse without hot sauce. Like buffalo sauce and ranch is like the greatest flavor combination on earth. Um, hot sauce is the best. I think Jamar Chase encapsulates hot sauce in the best possible way because he leads the NFL in those big plays down the field. He is an awesome dude, tons of charisma, tons of personality. And I think that he just matches hot sauce perfectly. Uh, for Dynasty Fantasy Football Outlook as well, hot sauce scorching up the charts. My Dynasty wide receiver too long-term. Jamar Chase is chef's kiss, absolutely magnificent and excellent. I love Jamar Chase. I love hot sauce. And that is the correct con for Jamar Chase. I will not be hearing any other discussions. The guy who asked the question said ketchup because he's the number one option. But I think that's too bland. You know, I think I want to dive a little bit deeper into the flavor of the player. You know what I'm saying? And Jamar Chase is hot sauce. Like, he is hot sauce. You know what I'm saying? Up next here, we have Jalen Waddle. Waddle was a tough one for me. I think I can make a lot of condiments Jalen Waddle. But for me, it's ranch. I'm a huge ranch guy. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm from that Midwest, baby. I say open oh, when I bump into people. You know what I mean? Ranch goes on everything. And I mean everything. Ranch is on everything. I'm dipping everything in ranch on this earth. You name it, ranch is getting dipped in. You know what I'm saying? And Jalen Waddle is going to be that guy for the Miami Dolphins offense. New head coach for the Miami Dolphins said, quote, Jalen Waddle, start him in your fantasy lineups. Because he is coming from that 49ers system where Debo Samuel was that guy. Jalen Waddle is going to be that guy. I know there's a whole trend right now in fantasy Twitter. It's like blank player is the next Debo Samuel because they can run and they can catch the ball and they're talented. It's Jalen freaking Waddle, dude. He is an absolute stud. I love him. He can do everything in NFL offense. And Jalen Waddle is ranch dressing. Moving on, Devonta Smith is mustard. He is mustard, bro. I love mustard. Mustard is awesome. Mustard is versatile. Mustard is great on pretzels. It's great on brats. It's great on hot dogs. It's great on burgers. It's great on so many things. You know, a nice, a nice sandwich, a nice club sandwich with a little bit of mustard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Devonta Smith is mustard. And here's why. He is talented. He is great. He is excellent. But he is underrated and overhated. All right? There's so many people out there who just don't like mustard. And it's like, bro, why do you not like mustard? It's great. It packs a punch. It is flavorful. It is such a good condiment. And Devonta Smith is a talented route runner, a good wide receiver. He won the Heisman Trophy last year. You know how hard that is to do as a wide receiver? Also, there's a random chair sitting next to me, by the way, if you hear me touch that. Um, Devonta Smith is mustard. He is mustard, and he is good. I will not be hearing any other arguments. Moving forward here, Amon Ross St. Brown, my boy, the love of my life, a guy who a lot of people like, a lot of people don't like. He is mayonnaise. He is mayo, baby, and here's why. I love Amon Ross St. Brown. I love him. I love mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is what makes sandwiches good. It is what makes a burger good. It is what makes everything good. Mayonnaise is that guy who's in the background that a lot of people are like, yeah, I don't know how to feel about that guy. It's made with eggs. You know what I'm saying? Um, Amonor St. Brown is good. He is a good NFL player. He did not just take advantage of his situation. He did, but he is also good. And mayonnaise is good. I've been on the Amonor St. Brown train for a long time now. As long as the, uh, the Detroit Lions don't spend like a, tens of millions of dollars on a stud wide receiver in free agency and draft a first round wide receiver, Lamar St. Brown is going to get his next season. He's going to be a good fantasy wide receiver long term, and I think he's a very talented real life NFL player. Amara St. Brown is mayonnaise, and he is good. Moving down the list here, ladies and gentlemen, next up is Elijah Moore, and Elijah Moore is ketchup because he is reliable. He is consistent. He is a talented wide receiver, but he's underrated. You know, what, what, you know, when's the last time you heard a best condiment debate and ketchup was the number one option? You know what I'm saying? Everyone's going to go with the ranches. They're going to go with the hot sauces. They're going to go with the, you know, the mayonnaises of the world. No one's talking about ketchup. You know, ketchup is that security blanket. It's that consistent friend who's been in your life for a long time. And Elijah Moore is going to be that guy for Dynasty Fantasy Football, guys. Him and Zach Wilson are going to be a dynamic duo for a long time, and I'm calling that right now. I don't care what uniform they're wearing. I don't care if they're in the New York Jets. I do not care. Elijah Moore is a good wide receiver, 
And Zach Wilson and him are going to be a nice connection for a long time for fantasy football. He's going to get his. He had a nice rookie year, and I think he's got a lot of great potential on field. I love him as a prospect coming out of Ole Miss. He's a stud wide receiver. He can do a little bit of everything on field. And catch up makes so much sense for him, in my opinion. He's reliable. He's safe. And he is good. Really sol- solid and underrated. Moving down the list here, Rashad Bateman is Chipotle mayonnaise. What you know about a little bit of Chipotle mayo? You know what I'm saying? Severely underrated. Severely underrated. Rashad Bateman was a fantastic prospect coming out. And just because he went to the Baltimore Ravens, everyone's like, oh, my God, I'm not going to draft him. He's not going to get targets. I don't care. I do not care. He had an injury riddled rookie season. When he was on the field, he produced. He produced more than Elijah Moore. And guess who's valued more in fantasy right now? Elijah Moore. Because everyone's like, oh, my God, Lamar Jackson doesn't pass the ball to wide receivers. Yes, he did. And yes, he does. Look at Hollywood Brown, man. Hollywood Brown had a great year this past season because Lamar Jackson passes the ball to wide receivers. Breaking news, he's not a running back. And Rashad Bateman, breaking news, is a good player. And so is Chipotle Manhays. I mean, come on. Get a, can I get an amen for that one? Let me get an amen in chat, even though there's no one watching this live. <laughs> I'm recording this. Not live. But anyway, Elijah Moore. Sorry, not Elijah Moore. Rashad Bateman is Chipotle Manhays. Severely overrated. Uh, sorry, that's <laughs> not severely overrated. Severely underrated, severely overhated. Chipotle Mayo is the best. And lastly, Rondale Moore is horseradish. I don't like horseradish. I don't. Horseradish, you know, it has its role. It has its role. Just like Ronald Moore has his role in the, in the Arizona Cardinals offense, which is that Swiss Army knife guy. But he reminds me a lot about LaVisca Chanel. You know, everyone was like, oh, my God, he's going to be the next stud. And he kind of just doesn't become the next stud. He's like, he's all right. He's going to have value for a while. He might develop into something special. But for now, you know, I'll put him on an RB sandwich every once in a while. You know, I'll throw him on a little Arby's every once in a while. Throw him on a little bit of a, you know, a, a friendship here and there. But, you know, besides that, though, I'm not using horseradish. Now, that's Cliff Kingsbury, you know. I think he feels the same way I do about uh, horseradish. He throws them out there every once in a while. He gives them a rep here and there. He throws them a bone every once in a while. But in general, just like, dude, he's horseradish. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? He's good, but he's not that good. You know, he, 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 he can play, but he's not a baller. You know what I mean? Same with horseradish. He's horseradish. We'll get into a couple more questions here. We'll probably wrap it up after a few more. Uh, I have, a, like, about five more on the list right here, boys. But we're, we're kind of rapid fire through these. I hope you guys enjoyed the Kahneman one. That was a great question. Thank you. Uh, for asking that, guys, I really appreciate that. One. That was that was really fun. I might clip that and post it on, on its own. Honestly, that was a, that was a good time. All right, up next here, back into the more serious questions. Based on their ADP prices, which is average draft position, in case you guys don't know, uh, does it make more sense to take Amari Cooper or CD Lamb at their values in ADP? In dynasty leagues, I think it makes more sense right now to take CD Lamb, and I think in redraft, it makes more sense to take Amari Cooper. CD Lamb is. Honestly, a little underrated right now in Dynasty, in my opinion. I think he's still a generational talent wide receiver who has a long-term path of becoming the alpha that wide receiver won in Dallas after they likely get out of Amari Cooper's contract here soon. Uh, Amari Cooper in redraft is more valuable, in my opinion, because he's still getting those wide receiver one targets in Dallas uh, for the short term. And I think that right now he is way cheaper and a way better of a value than C.D. Lamb is going to be next season. And redraft Lamb will still find a way to creep up draft boards and be drafted as a mid-tier wide receiver one to wide receiver two. While Amari Cooper might be like a wide receiver two to wide receiver three value, which is an absolute steal. I'm definitely going to be more in on Amari Cooper next year than C.D. Lamb for redraft. But in Dynasty, give me Lamb all day long there, in my opinion. Uh, Brandon Cooks versus Amon Ross St. Brown for redraft in Dynasty. This is a pretty easy one for me. Uh, at value, I will take Brandon Cooks in both. Brandon Cooks is a consistent producer who is dirt cheap every single season. He has finished with over a 1,000 receiving yards, regardless of garbage quarterback play, regardless of garbage situation, team over team over team, year over year over year. Brandon Cooks is an elite fantasy football wide receiver, and he is an absolute dream for fantasy. He is that gonna, he's going to live in that wide receiver 11 to 20 range every single season, and I absolutely adore him. He is such a value. Uh, for Dynasty, though, it's on paper, value out the window. Give me a moment of St. Brown. I think he has a higher ceiling long term. Uh, and could, you know, pose more. He definitely is worth a lot more than Brandon Cooks right now uh, in general. But I do think, uh, right, just player-wise, I would rather have a Brandon Cooks on my team next season, uh, especially with Cox, back to redraft. Brandon Cooks all the way along there, in my opinion. Uh, next question here. I took this orphan. So orphan teams in Dynasty is a, uh, a team where people, uh, the user who was managing the team before had to leave the league for some reason. So there's an empty spot, in case you guys don't know, uh, the lingo. So yeah, someone took over an orphan team. 
Uh, they traded everything they could for picks, so they burnt it down. It's a super flex league, which is two quarterback. Uh, they have no starting quarterback, so that's a little tricky there. They're going to need to get two quarterbacks by the time the next season starts. I have the 104 rookie pick, 107, 203, 205, and 206. So my question is, which, which rookie quarterbacks do you believe will start sooner? So the only rookie quarterback I really believe will start immediately out of this 2022 rookie draft class pre-draft. Obviously, draft spots determine a lot here. I think the only quarterback I would feel very confident taking right now with a rookie pick, uh, knowing that he will be starting next season, is Kenny Pickett, quarterback out of Pittsburgh University. Um, I think Kenny Pickett is pro-ready. He gives me Mac Jones vibes. He's like Joe Burrow light. I've seen some pro comps for. He's a well-rounded, balanced quarterback who has a lot of college experience, played a lot of games. Uh, pretty turnover adverse guy who uh, will be pretty consistent. I think I think he's gonna be a pretty good fantasy quarterback. Not the best, probably gonna live in that top like 15 to 24 range, but he'll be a weekly starter for sure in Superflex. And I would feel confident spending a first round pick in Superflex on Kenny Pickett. Absolutely, I, I, I look at him at that 107 range on uh, your rookie picks there. So Kenny Pickett. Everybody else don't really think they're gonna be day one starters, or the landing spot's gonna be a big factor for sure. Moving on the board here with questions: uh, Would you trade Debo Samuel? For Michael Pittman Jr. and Travis Etienne? Uh, no, I would not. Debo Samuel is an absolute stud right now. Super young. Great uh, great situation. Trey Lance, young quarterback coming in, is going to feed Debo the rock. Uh, not much structural change in the 49ers organization. Kyle Shanahan, so they're coaching this team uh, with a red-hot offense. I think Debo Samuel is an absolute stud. Well, I think Michael Pittman Jr. is a great value in fantasy football. He does not have the ceiling that Debo Samuel does. We saw Debo be absolutely elite this season as a wide receiver, two overall in fantasy, that fantasy wide receiver running back hybrid. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr. Just does not provide that upside. Travis Etienne Jr. is a good player. I love his college profile. We have not seen him produce a lick in the NFL yet. And while I do think he's going to be a good value in Dynasty, I still I think he's a Dynasty buy. Uh, I'm holding off on him right now, especially in this trade with this kind of package. I just don't want to place that much value into him yet. Makes sense. Good player, but I'm not the bridge the gap between uh, him and Pittman for Debo. Next question here, second to last question before we wrap the show up here, guys. What do you think of Cordero Patterson for the next two seasons? Wow, that's a great question. I honestly think that Cordero Patterson might be the biggest wild card in all of fantasy football right now. Uh, he could be a top 10 player next year. He could be outside the top 30. It really is all going to depend on where he's playing and what the situation looks like as far as players brought in to compete with him. Uh, and stuff like that. I think Cordell Patterson really benefits from Calvin really not being there in Atlanta this past season. But that being said, you can't really knock him for that. Uh, he produced extremely well. He is pretty old for Dynasty, but I think over the next two seasons, he could still provide nice value, especially next year. Uh, but I think he's, he's definitely on the decline in Dynasty Leagues, in my opinion. Last question here of the show, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. It's been a really fun one for me. Uh, I feel like we've had a great time, especially with that comment question. So let's take things here on a wrap with one last trade question here. Ezekiel Elliott plus T. Higgins or Joe Mixon and Cortland Sutton? For me, this is a pretty easy answer. Uh, I'm going to take Ezekiel Elliott and T. Higgins here. Uh, well, I do think Joe Mixon and Cortland Sutton is an enticing package, especially with, for Mixon with running back scarcity at an elite level. Mixon's not the youngest running back, even though he's producing an elite level right now. I think he still does have two to three good years left in him. Um, Cortland Sutton is not my favorite. Uh, I don't think he's the best at all. While Ezekiel Elliott on the other side, does have like one to two more good fantasy seasons left in him. Uh, you can still flip him later at a later date for more value. While T. Higgins is on the rise, he's the top 10, top 15 dynasty wide receiver right now. He's going to be linked to Joe Burrow for the next 10 years. And I want that guy. I want that guy all day long in this trade. T. Higgins is by far the best player in this trade here, in my opinion. And I want that guy. Because Ezekiel Elliott and Joe Mixon, well, I think Mixon's definitely better. The gap between T. Higgins and Cortland Sutton is ginormous. So I want T. Higgins there all day long. Uh, so I hope that answers your questions, guys. Thank you so much for sending in those questions, everybody. I really had a great time today. And thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Good Morning Fantasy. I will see you again with another episode Tuesday morning, guys. I hope you all have a fantastic Monday. Peace and love. See you tomorrow, everybody. Good morning. Have a great day. Goodbye.